Good morning folks, welcome to North Knives, my name is Jack and today we are doing some sharpening. So the knives in question are questionable and one of them I think is a good knife, the other one I don't know. I think it's probably a hunk of junk. Um, but we can test that, so I'm actually just going to test whether I think this knife's worth sharpening. Yes. So of course we have the infamous Husk Japan. Now, probably everyone's seen this knife, um, it, nothing to say. The design is bad. It reminds me of myself when I was completely amateur. So the first thing I'll start is this edge profile for a kitchen knife, which it's advertised as there's no excuse for it to be that curvy if you've got a flat chopping board. Flat. The rock that you have to do to get through food, that is ridiculous. The only time I would consider that sort of curve acceptable is if it then went into an extremely long flat part here. That might be reasonable. But curves look good, so when you start making knives, you, you want to put curves in, they look great. Um, we're the, I don't know, our human eyes, we just love, we love curvy stuff. Or maybe that's just men. Um, and the hole, the hole, it's a kitchen knife. I don't know if anyone, if I get this thing sharp, I would not want to be spinning it around my finger in the kitchen. If you use the knife and you put your finger through, the angle of your entire arm is its just not good for cutting. Um, and also that part of the blade becomes kind of useless because if you chop anything above that's taller than what half an inch or just less than an inch, it's going to be banging into your finger, so it makes no sense. The handle shape, pretty comfortable. Ch it's chunky, which again reminds me of, of myself um, when I was am more amateur. It, yeah. The fit and finish isn't like horrendous. It's not perfect. There's gaps, there's, but you know, I think these things are about 30 quid, so I'm not going to slate the fit and finish. Um, and then, yeah, hollow grind. It's got a hollow grind. I don't know if that'll show up too well. But up to this line where it goes dark, it's just, it's a hollow grind, which for Western users, it's just not a normal grind for a kitchen knife. Um, Maybe it'd be better for some kind of like hunt skinning knife or something, but okay. So the other knife is this Taylor's Eye Witness, which is Sheffield made, which I presume is Sheffield steel. And I think this is, a re I don't think it would have been an expensive knife. The handles nice, the blades like, um, Look at that blade profile. That's a nice profile. Someone who knew cooking designed this knife. And um, yeah, I've got no problem sharpening this. And you know. So I have a hardness tester, HRC tester. I have the full professional equipment to test this knife and see, I don't know, I can't tell what you, what steel it's made out of, um, but I can tell you if it's hard, and that's what we're gonna do today, because 
I haven't seen anyone else do this and basically you can find so much good stuff about this knife on the internet because their marketing campaign has been like um, so if you find someone slating it you'll find someone loving it and who knows if that's robots or just inexperienced home cooks or we don't know but I'm going to tell you the HRC of this knife and we'll know Okay, I'm just going to move my little helpers and first of all, just, I mean obviously there's there's probably a million ways I could fake this video um, so you're going to have to take my word for it anyway but this is a 62 62 HRC block. I'm going to test this first so you can see. Here we go. So I've got that set there. The block's loaded. And I'm going to load the weight. There's weights in the back of here. They're now loading onto that um, diamond indenter. It should be accurate to within one and a half HRC either way. Okay, so that should be settled in place. Give it a little tap. Okay, and now so we unload the weight and you should see this come around. Focus, okay, so we've got 62 and a half HRC. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so now it's time to load this beast. Um, I preferably I'd test it in in this black bit somewhere and hide it, but um, there could have been a differential heat treatment on this knife, so that would not be fair. I need to test it near the edge. Okay, so the knife is loaded, you can see that there, okay, so now I'm going to load the weight. Okay, that's not good. Okay, this is really bad. This is horrendous. I'm probably using the wrong scale to test this knife. I've never seen it go around that many times. Okay, so I don't even know if we're going to come out with a positive number that I can read off this. Okay, I think we're done. Right, so now I push this lever to unload. So watch what happens here. Twenty-nine HRC. Maybe twenty-nine point one or two. Let's be fair, 29 and a half. Just gonna quickly jump in here. We're gonna give it the benefit of the doubt at 29 and a half HRC because um, I actually don't know that machine well enough. I, do, I think I've used the wrong scale to test it um, and possibly the wrong indenter. I am not used to testing material that soft so it's quite possible, in my mind, because the dial went round that many times, um, it's not 29 HRC. I think, I think it could be even softer. If someone else can weigh in and knows that machine better than me, 
please do. But we'll give it the benefit of the doubt and say it was 29 and a half HSE. Okay, so what does that tell us about us Japan? I'm not a metallurgist, so I can't tell you, but in my professional knife maker's opinion, this steel was not hardened and possibly was isn't made from a hardenable steel. So what that means is that maybe there's different grades of steel and say even this knife, maybe this is around about 50 HRC or something, but a, a knife maker like me, we're normally aiming for around 60 HRC, something like that. If high-end Japanese knives, they're maybe like 65 HRC or in those ranges and basically steel gets cheaper non-hardenable steel non-hardenable steel is cheaper um so this steel could be made from something that maybe you'd make a pan out of or pots i've heard a lot of people calling it pot steel if you've been scammed by this knife i'm not having a go at you i think that the marketing campaign for this knife was amazing um all the YouTube comments, I don't know how they've done it, but anyone could have been fooled into buying this knife, especially at the price point. Um, I believe the original packaging is quite nice as well. So if you bought this for someone or someone bought this for you, it's no shame, but it is a scam. And if you haven't given them your money yet, please don't please okay just for fairness this is a good knife um this is the taylor's eyewitness i'd never heard of them um until i saw this knife it feels good in the hand i've just sharpened it this took a really nice edge i don't know how sharp it came but I've had a look on the website and unfortunately their website's not functioning just great right at the moment but you seem to be able to buy these from John Lewis and Amazon. You can buy a full set for like 100 and 160 quid, something like that. They have a more prestige range than this with like proper wooden handles. This is some kind of plastic um, but it seems to have brass pins. But anyway, I have reason to believe that this knife I don't think it's probably even made anymore, but I believe this knife was probably much less than £30 originally compared to the, the Husk knife. So yeah, great knife and it probably cost something like 15 quid. So yeah, I'm not just slating knives for the sake of it, but yeah. If you've got a small budget, this is a good brand. Right, now for the Husk. Husk, whatever you want to call it, this scam knife. I'm not going to charge the customer, but I'm going to try and do sharpen it for them. I know the edge isn't going to last, and I'm going to try and be polite um, about <laughs> how I describe the knife to them, but obviously going to let them know um, it's not good steel. Okay, so... I didn't have much fun doing that, but this is the same paper. It will take an edge. But I don't think it's going to last. And, um, yeah. And just for a little bit of context on that knife taking an edge, I could get some rebar like this, which is a non-hardenable steel, I could forge it out into a blade shape, I could sharpen it up and it will cut paper just like that and then on its very first use on something actually night like on wood or food or it's just going to blunt and blunt and blunt so quickly and that's why knives are made from hardenable steel. It's so that the edge lasts, it, it's not, you know, any steel can take an edge basically. 29 and a half HRC.
Um, so this has basically just confirmed everything that I thought about this knife from from reading online and you know I smiled when I unwrapped this because I didn't know what I was getting to sharpen. Um, I do not believe this knife was made in Japan, I, I believe it's Chinese. I do not believe that the steel was hardenable. I do not believe that the knife is designed well. I do believe that this knife is a complete waste of your money. And they promise everything that um, someone like me hopes to promise, uh, a small independent knife maker, like handmade. Um, for a fraction of the cost. Basically, if you came to me and wanted a knife, not this knife, obviously, but a knife of this size, at the moment, you're looking at two or 300 quid and I'll make you a great knife, but this is 30 quid. So, and then my, uh, the, the amount they've spent on the marketing campaign, they could have just spent that on, on decent steel and someone to design a proper knife. It, it, it makes no sense. This knife makes no sense. That's my conclusion. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Take care, bye-bye.